just, just kidding. Hey Jess, how are you? I saw you at the sushi bar the other night. Oh, right on. on. It was pretty good, no, wasn't this it? Is, this is a celebrity. <laughs> he probably doesn't like being. No, a not at all. Not at all. You're good. Alan Swan, President Panasonic Energy of North America, and Eric Bach, Senior Vice President and Chief Engineer at Lucid Motors, joined together to discuss how innovation in the electric vehicle industry helps drive towards a more sustainable future, a mission important to both Panasonic and Lucid. The conversation will highlight how this type of industry partnership can support making the U.S. a leading EV manufacturing market. Please welcome to the stage, Alan Swan, oh, okay. Eric Bach, and once again, Cal Penn, our Honorary thank Climate you. Action thank Ambassador. You, thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing? Good? Happy morning, happy, happy day one. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here. I, you know, for those of you who don't know, I'm an actor. I'm a former uh, White House staffer. But I'm also uh, a very passionate climate advocate and very excited to partner with Panasonic at uh, CES this year, specifically to talk about green initiatives and this partnership. Um, and I, I, wanna, I wanna read this specifically okay. because I don't wanna get it wrong because it excited the nerdy part of my brain <laughs> when we were talking earlier. So we were talking about a sustainable future and how a sustainable future is possible. And the, the growth of a secure and sustainable domestic EV supply chain. When, I, when, I, when we were discussing that and I was reading the briefing that shows, the fact that it was sustainable and secure, I thought was a, a wonderful sentence in, in a world where many of us who are advocates don't really get to fully explore those things. And so we're focusing today on how Panasonic and Lucid are contributing to a more sustainable transportation future. I wanted to start by, by, by basically saying uh, these strong values that folks share around in advancing environmental sustainability, increasing EV adoption by consumers, that's obviously core to that vision. It's something that people who are here are very excited about. Can both of you talk about why partnerships like the one between Panasonic and Lucid are critical to accelerating the world toward a net zero emissions future? Yeah, do you want to go first? Yeah. Obviously, as an American engineering, technology, and manufacturing company, we are really proud to work with partners like Panasonic. And we all share a vision of a more sustainable uh, future in transportation. Now, we can only make that happen if we get access and robust and secure access to vital EV components like batteries. They're the largest single cost item on an EV, and security in supply will ensure that we can all scale our manufacturing and sales volumes of the more sustainable EVs. Now, partnering again on technology also means that we will advance the technology together as like-minded, innovative leaders with that, we'll be able to transform from ice age into the new <laughs> EV age. Yeah, Alan. Yeah, so I'll add a couple of things. So technology first. The partnerships are really important. We're still in an early industry, okay. uh, in the EV industry. Huh. So working with companies like Lucid mean they're really at the forefront of that technology. As you know, we've been making batteries for over 100 years, and we have been pursuing how to improve that battery technology. When you take that, with the technology from Lucid, bring that together, it's an unbelievable step forward uh, from an EV perspective. So technology is huge, partnership-wise. On securing supply chain, very, very important. There isn't really a supply chain in the United States today. We're in the stage of start trying to develop that, and it's coming. Uh, these partnership, the partnership with Lucid, for example, gives us that economy of scale, and gives us that ability to create a supply chain in the US, okay. which not only supports the United States and gives us security from that aspect, but also gives us the opportunity to give thousands of Americans jobs here in the United States, and that is really, really cool. 
What, what's uh, what's driving the current growth in the EV market, and and what do you see as, I guess, important to driving further consumer adoption of EVs? What what are you all hearing from consumers? You're welcome. Fundamentally, <laughs> I believe it is that people are recognizing that electric vehicles are just superior. It's a dramatically better driving and living experience if you have an EV. You don't have to take the compromise of a, a rattly drive with a nice engine that has to shift gears 10 times and uh, you also have the best conscience that you're not producing greenhouse gases every mile you're driving so dramatically more efficient you've got a lot of power and energy in your car you've got a completely connected experience all the time and the electric vehicles nowadays only get better and better over the year. So the electronics and the software that comes with this transformation in technology is going to give dramatic improvements over time to the customers that buy into that space. The second component to the adoption is actually having choice. So you're no longer stuck with one or two EV choices and have to buy into downsides there, but you can now choose the vehicle that you desire from a visual appearance, from a, a functionality and capability perspective. At Lucid, we are focusing on making luxury EVs that have extremely long range, and long range in part due to a large battery pack, for instance, powered by Panasonic cells, but also as one of our core missions embracing the topic of efficiency in the consumption of the electrons needed to make the car drive. So with the Lucid Air, we launched the most efficient EV on the planet. Our Pure that we just handed the first vehicles before the new year to the first customers achieves a 140 miles per gallon equivalent efficiency. And that's outstanding. That's groundbreaking for this class of a vehicle. And we are continuing down that path, giving more choice, sustainability, and the power of technology with air, later gravity, and then we'll come into the mid-size segment. Yeah, uh, if I can add, you can hear me okay, I don't need the mic. Okay, um, so if I can add, the reason consumers are very much more focused now on EVs is the choice that Eric just mentioned. The other thing is, quite frankly, the range is good. People can buy a car, an EV car, it can go 300, 400, 500 miles, even 600 miles, actually. Charging is, is getting better and better, and as that technology improves, people will have the choice, and they will see that the EVs are actually better than a nice car, and will only get better. And they're sustainable, so you eliminate the carbon. So for that's the reason why consumers see the EVs now as a way forward. It's just getting more and more stronger. You're, you're both uh, obviously leaders in this space um, and for consumers that are excited about contributing to climate solutions, hearing this talk, whether they're watching from home or, or here on the floor, is obviously very exciting. And, and what I'm wondering is how can the electric vehicle industry support the U.S. and work together with the U.S. government to revitalize the manufacturing sector and grow its next generation economy. Yeah, I'll take the lead on that one. Um, so the, the Bipartisan Act and the Inflation Reduction Act have been a huge benefit to EV manufacturing and EV manufacturers, including the raw material, uh, the whole supply chain. That act in itself will support the United States going forward. And I would make this comment to everybody that in 10 years time, we're all going to look back at this Inflation Reduction Act in particular, and it will have developed thousands and thousands of jobs in the electric vehicle industry. Thousands of jobs will be created. You might not feel it now, but you'll see that happening over the next, over the next few years in particular. And this act, and what's happened with that, will ensure our United States supply chain for EV industry. Yeah, I personally believe that the EV industry and there the technology leaders like Lucid can actually create this local technology hub that then essentially pays out in manufacturing jobs. If you are building cutting edge, leading desirable EVs that 
the world wants and you can export these products even from the US into other regions, then you have a great um, uh, starting point to a future that then goes from the OEM to the tier ones, the localization, the tier twos, all the technologies that come and multiply the manufacturing labor jobs in the country, local, that's really important. The drive to sustainable manufacturing also includes localization as a strategic component because if you're building a large volume of products, you need to bring in loads of materials to build them and just that transport CO2 emissions component can't be underestimated. And that's why we think if we build cutting edge EVs in the US design and build, then the localization will bring multiple effects in terms of sustainability and jobs. There is actually another angle that I believe hasn't been thought of enough. Uh, EVs are large battery storages. They are not static energy storage devices. We are building mobile energy storage devices. And for instance, at Lucid, we've equipped every single Lucid Air with a bi-directional charging system. What that means is you now have a mobile energy storage asset that you're taking to work or to the mall or it sits at home and we can tap into that to store energy in high wind or high solar exposure uh, times and utilize that stored energy by, via bi-directional charging or reverse power transfer as we say into applications whether it's the home um, in disaster uh, environments, right? You have a home backup battery storage with the car or just for equalizing or, or um, a peak shaving the demand curve over the day. So I think there's a huge opportunity that we can all tap into in the future with this electrification. I, I want to wrap up uh, by asking you a question, maybe about the competition a little bit. Is that okay? <laughs> so in recent years, we've, we've, we've seen a growing focus on EVs from, from several new uh, manufacturers and also existing manufacturers, both. So how will this affect the trajectory, A, of the industry, uh, but B, how have Lucid and Panasonic differentiated themselves within the industry? Do you want to go? Me? Well, I mean, in our case, we announced, uh, I'm sure you all know this, we announced the Kansas facility. Uh, we did groundbreaking back in November. That facility will add a further 60% capacity to our battery manufacturing, um, which is huge. That facility is a multi-customer facility. That's how it's designed. And that's one of the reasons that we're excited that Lucid are, are joining us in the partnership with that facility. So that, that is really key to what's going on in that trajectory will just get larger and larger as we move forward. Yeah, at Lucid we really welcome competition in the EV space because we all have to remember what do we want to get rid of? It's the ICE engine vehicles and every year we sell about 80 to 100 million of those ICE engine cars with a now growing portion of EVs and it's such a vast market that we all as an industry have to provide choice and great technology uh, solutions to transform our transportation to being more sustainable. So I don't think we, none of us OEMs that are transitioning to EVs will have a problem due to um, competition. It actually will also make us better. At Lucid Motors, we believe we've, we've now uh, delivered the most technologically advanced luxury EV with the most efficient and performing powertrain. So it's not just efficient, our drive units, our powertrain, and you have to sacrifice power and fun while driving. It's mega powerful with a Lucid Sapphire, over 1200 horsepower, sub two seconds, zero to 60, sub four seconds, so 3.7 seconds, 3 .7 seconds zero to 100 miles per hour, top speed over 200 miles per hour, so no sacrifice whatsoever, but dramatically more efficient than any supercar that, would you, that you would consider. And on the entry end with a, a Lucid Air Pure at $87,900 starting price, the most affordable luxury EV 
in a, in a standard size that gets the 140 miles per gallon equivalent. Now, of course, competition will try to achieve that level of performance and efficiency, but we're on to the next generation already. And that's where competition drives us all to be better. And we're doing that in the US. And I think that's going to help us here to be and continue to be a leading technology nation with great manufacturing and growth. Eric, that you made me very excited in what you said. <laughs> you said something specific that, that Alan, you and I have talked about, which is uh, wanting to offer the consumer choice yes. and making sure that that competition results in better products and better choices. And not only that confidence, but that excitement in the products that you outlined make me very excited. And it's a perfect way to wrap up because we're here to talk about solutions, the ways in which industry can offer those solutions, the ways in which consumers can sort of help bring the costs down uh, and, uh, and, and buy some of these devices. It's also very exciting that we're at a CES where there are a lot of prototypes of things, but then there are a lot of practical things that are actually being done and have already been done. You talked about the DeSoto groundbreaking. Yep. Um, that's opening in 2025, fully operational, right? So yep. uh, all of that information and a lot of the other products and very exciting uh, green impact things are here on the floor. So urge you all to poke around. If you're joining online, um, there's a digital component of this as well. So thank you so much for the great conversation. Yeah, you got some of that? Yeah, just one more to wrap up <laughs> for my side. Yeah, go ahead. Um, if you haven't seen a Lucid Air Live, I've on not sat in one. We've got three over in the West Hall, partnering with other partners. So take the chance, walk over there, check out the Lucid Air. I think you'll be excited sitting in it and envisioning yourself owning one. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ah, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well done, sir. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All right. Huh? I'm you so want to glad you project. Oh, you and I? Well, thank Eric and you. I? That's the stage part. Okay. Okay. So, but both of us for pictures. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There we go.